we're going to go a little bit deeper into the discussion on the relay modules and your turnouts so we could power them with Arduino. So let's get going right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tom Kovichak, and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And in my Monday night live stream, I touched a little bit on the relay modules and the turnout control. So if you haven't seen that, we're going to go a little bit deeper into it right now. The module that I used in the previous video was this one right here, the four relay module. And I only used three of them to operate a turnout and a crossover. So you could check back on that video to see what we did on there. One that I did not show you is this one right here by DF Robot. It's a single relay module. It has a Grove connector on it that can easily be hooked up into a sensor shield. All the relay modules that I'll be showing you are the same except for this one right here, the single module. What's different on this one here is there is no option for external power, which you'll see on the next slides. On this two relay module, you'll see some extra pins on there with a jumper. This is for external power. The Arduino can handle up to three relays, but if you're going to be using any other components on your Arduino in your project, it will be advised to use those jumpers and the external power supply for the relays. On this four relay module, you'll notice that the jumper is removed and placed off to the side, sitting on the VCC pin, allowing the JD VCC pin to have external power applied to it. We'll get into that a little bit later on. The eight relay module has everything the other modules has, except for more relays on it. This gives you a better shot of the JD VCC pin which is the one you use for the external power. You can see the clip is sitting on the VCC. These two pins will normally be jumper together. Once you receive it, you'll want to remove the jumper and apply external power to the JD VCC to whatever power your relay is rated at, either five volts or 12 volts. This view shows the two relay module with the jumper in place, and you'll notice it has an extra pin on it with the ground. The modules with the one relay do not have the option of the external power. You normally don't need it for just one relay. A close-up view reveals all the components that are on all the relays, except for on this one, there are two LEDs, one to show power, and the other one shows power when the relay is energized. You'll see the component on there, PC817C is the optocoupler. This keeps the power isolated from the Arduino to the coil on your relay. As you can see on this diagram, it identifies all the components on a relay module. This schematic diagram shows the typical wiring of each relay on the module. Take notice of the jumper on the top left. At the very right is your output pins of normally closed, normally open, and common. I have one relay hooked up to the Arduino, and you can see I have a green and a red LED. The green LED is hooked up to the normally closed, which will be equivalent to the straight track on your turnout. And the red one will be equivalent to the converging track. The center terminal will be hooked up to the frog. You have the wires coming off the Arduino to power the relay. You can see digital right relay one high and I have it for five seconds, and then I go to low for five seconds. So low is energizing it, and when it's energized, that will be in the converging 
position of your turnout on my example at least unless you want to hook it up differently here's the power it's on green right now and five seconds later it will turn to red and you can see the LED lighting up on this side over here when it's energized The other LED right here is showing that it has power to the to the module. So that's all there is for this. It goes from digital high right here and then switches to low right there when it turns to red. If you're going to be powering your frog, you're going to want to use a relay in here. You have the frog and you have your two feeder wires and you're going to hook up your frog to the common, which is the center terminal on the relay. If you're going to have it in the straight position, this one is powered and you want the frog to be powered the same way. So you want it on the normally closed contact, which is this one right here. If you're going on the diverging route, your point is powered with this rail right here. And so you want the normally open contact which is this one right here so it's that easy you'll have a wire connected to the bottom of your frog and that goes to the center you take your feeder wires you don't even have to connect them here you could have your feeder wires you know back up here or back over here depending on what turnout you have the Pico, you're going to have to power this end right here. This is a Pico turnout. If you have a Srinahara or an Atlas, this is powered all the way through. So this rail right here is powered just like this rail right here. The power transfers all the way through, all the way through up here. The only thing that is isolated is the frog. On the Pico, it's isolated here, but this is common with the frog right here. So you're going to have to put insulators up at the end and then put your feeders up here on that track and put your feeders up here on this track. A word of caution on the Shinohara turnouts. As you'll notice, like I mentioned before, this one, this frog is insulated on both ends. On this Y, the frog is not insulated. The only place that it's insulated is between the point rails and the rest of the rails right here. So all of this right here has the same potential. These are all connected together. So the only isolation is right here. So you'll have to put insulators at the end right here. But basically, that's all there is to it. The common, which is the center one, goes on your frog. Your straight track, you see right here, when it's straight, you want that connected. So you're going to hook it up to the normally closed. Now on these type of relays here on the relay module, it energizes on a low signal. So you're going to have to start out your sketch with high so it stays de-energized. When it's de-energized, that's normally closed right there. When it's energized, it switches over and you're on the other side. And that's when you're going to want the normally open contact. 
when you're on your diverging route. Boom. You're using this rail right here, and you want the frog to be the same polarity. You want it to be the same as this right here. Those two are the same, and that's going to be on your normally open contact. Whether you're using one, you're using four, they're all the same. You can see all the way down, each one of the relays has a normally closed, a common, and a normally open. You just have to think it out, do your turnouts one at a time with your relays, and then check it with a meter to make sure you have it correctly. I know there's a lot of people that make those mistakes and have wire them backwards. Same thing goes on a tortoise machine. If you're using a tortoise, same thing as a relay. You have the same kind of contacts on as on this relay right here. When your switch machine is in one position, one side of the, the contacts is normally closed and the other side is normally open. You have two sets of contacts on there. So say this side over here is normally closed. So when you go like this, this is going to be op normally open and just the opposite for the other side. I'm always experimenting with different ways of doing things on the model railroad. So keep checking back on my videos to see if there's any new updates on anything. So until the next time, we'll see you.